Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Black Talon Episode 5, Sorrow. There will be spoilers which would definitely affect the series and the Realms of Sigmar, so if you want to watch the original in its entirety and without interruption, please go to Warhammer TV. This episode is brought to you by Mastermind Models and Miniatures and Hawkins and & Company. Mastermind Models & Minis is an insanely talented paint studio out of Huntsville, Alabama who do commissions, so if your pile of shame is weighing you down, be sure to check them out in the description below and be sure to tell them that we sent you. Hawkins & Company is a veteran-owned leather-making firm using the best American-made materials to create the finest handmade wallets available. Coming in classic bifold trucker and biker builds with a variety of patterns and insignias, all made from leather sourced from one of America's last tanneries. So if your Velcro wallet is starting to show its age, buy a rugged, beautiful, American-made piece of art from Hawkins & Company and use coupon code COUNTERPOINTS for 15% off. He could only weep. No, I'm not him. How are you, Eve? What do you remember? What is this place? This isn't right. It's not been right for a very long time. Has it? I need to get back. This isn't how it's supposed to be. The, the reforging... Can wait. If it helps, think of it like this. You've reached a fork in the road. Or perhaps, more literally, a fork in the path of the lightning. What you need to do now is choose which of those paths to travel. The door to the truth. Or the door back to where you came from. Who are you? A guide. To what? To the truth. To your memories. To the excised moments stolen from your life. You could be whole again, Neve. If you chose to be. But... No, those memories are gone. It's a part of the price. The cost of reforging. <laughs> no, Neve, they were stolen from you like everything else. Stolen and hidden here in this lost dream. Would you like to see? After all, who are we but the sum of our memories? I'll be right here with you. I have been here before. Indeed you have. Changed. This is who you are. Me? You really thought you were her, didn't you? That this woman, this mortal hero, was your true self. I am a Stormcast, one of Sigmar's chosen. A worthy soul plucked from death and reforged to protect order. <laughs> you think she is worthy? She might have been a hero in the eyes of her people, but to Sigmar, she was nothing. 
He let her die. He allowed this to happen. Neve was killed by her friend Hendrik in order to cover up a grave secret. Now at a fork in the path of lightning, she is being hunted and counseled by a ghastly spirit taking on the form of her friends. The truth is that the Black Talon series is rewriting some of the lore surrounding Stormcast and Neve Black Talon, so what I will say next is a educated guess. It is mentioned in the lore that every time a Stormcast dies, the God of Death, Nagash, and Sigmar, the God of Order, struggle over the soul of the immortal hero. Each time a warrior passes through the storm, a piece of them is chipped away and given to the Lord of Death. Considering that Nagash would have met all of Neve's friends and have memories and insights into all of them, it makes sense that either he or one of his minions is currently shepherding Neve and attempting to manipulate her with the truth. The God of Death would be interested in playing with the destination of souls because he has in the past manipulated the realms to his own ends. It was Nagash who first allowed in chaos, and it was Nagash who tried to create a super weapon known as the Necroquake to end life and bring all under his rule. The forces of order have been fighting chaos and death since the Age of Chaos and helped thwart Nagash's plans, reducing his power, ultimately only giving him command over the dead instead of ending all life in the realms. This is a pastime and plaything for Nagash to toy with Sigmar's heroes and see if he can get them to turn against their patron god. The Phantom, whether aligned with death or chaos, shows Neve the female warrior she thought she once was. One by one, they are brought down by the Horn Shadow Chaos Champion. Neve begins to panic as she realizes she remembers each champion, once believing them to be her as fervently as she believed herself to be Thea. There's just one problem, though. Her memory ends just as the great secret is revealed. And her. There are more. All who you thought were you. All cut down. Dozens more. Dozens? Why are you showing me this? Because you wanted to know who you are. Did... Did this horned shadow kill me, too? Is that why I keep seeking out its victims? Trying to... Claim their lives as my own. In a manner of speaking. But why are these the stories that I've lost? Stolen? Stolen by who? How did you get here? How did you die this time? I... I... There is darkness within all of us, Neve. Even those we consider... Friends. All you have to do is remember. Go no further. You don't need to remember more. You are who you are. I was not her. I was not Thea. I... I'm so sorry, Neve. But you will not remember this. <laughs> <laughs> Lies! Not Hendrik. No. Why would he? He does what is required of him. You don't see it yet, do you? The truth that hides in plain sight. He is not your friend. He is your jailer. Oh. Charged to hold the leash that binds you to almighty Sigma. And he is good at his job. Could it be... Lysandra? No. I, I, I wasn't her. I... I... I'm sorry. Every time you get close, she was here. I was. 
is here. wasn't me. I, I was... Forgive me. He is waiting. Ready to do his Sigmar's bidding. Hendrick being charged as Neve's jailer opens up a massive moral conundrum. If Neve's best friend would betray her search for identity, if he was charged by Sigmar with this mission, and if she is loyal to both, what does that say about how they perceive her? What great danger could Neve pose and what great secret would demand her blood over and over again? The ghost who has said that he cannot lie seems to be lying by omission. Each time that Hendrik kills Neve, he is begging her, pleading with her to walk away, to let the memories die and to simply be Sigmar's champion. Neve's obsession with her own identity and the constant pullback to the dead warriors is the manipulation of dark forces vying for Neve's soul. Stop. Enough! No more. Lies, Neve. Since the day Sigmar claimed you, Lies and deceit. And this? How do I know this isn't a lie? I've already told you. I cannot lie to you. Why? Why not? Who are you? Me. I'm just a memory. Me. <gasps> Someone you half remember. <gasps> no. No. No, 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 no. I'm the answer you've been searching for. The only answer you need. I am you. I was never you. Never! You have always been me. Deep down you know that, don't you? You can fight it, rage against it, but you cannot deny it. Not anymore. Before Sigma stole your soul and cleaved it in two, this was who you were. Who you've always been. Not a black talon, but a claw of chaos. Then what Sigma offered me was redemption. Offered? Offered suggests that you had a choice. He saved me. From what? Free will? From myself. From what I was. From what I would become. But with no choice. Because Sigma fears what choice you would make if you really knew the truth. That is why Hendrik does what he does. Because he must preserve the lie. And fear? And the others I thought were me? We killed them, Neve. Every one of them. <sighs> and now 
you know the truth. You have a choice to make. What choice? Between truth or oblivion. Between Sigmar's lies and who you were meant to be. So choose. One door leads to me. To remembering everything. To reclaiming yourself. The other, to comfortable ignorance. And the unending search for meaning. You're right. I do have a choice. But it's not about this moment. It's about every moment hereafter. About every life we save or take. It's about the people we choose to call friends. And the lengths we'll go to protect them. Leave. Go through that door. And everything you've learned here will be forgotten. I know. <sighs> He'll kill you again. You'll be back here all the same. And I'll make the same choice. <laughs> you usually do. Neve's skepticism of her tormentor is justified as this is just what the forces of death and chaos would do to claim a soul for themselves. The Phantom reveals that Neve was the Horned Shadow, a chaos champion and a killer of heroes. Sigmar stole her soul, cut it in two, and purified half for his own purposes. The dark half of her soul calls to Neve through the Phantom, saying they can be whole again. She can have her memory, her power, and fulfill her destiny as a champion of chaos. The Phantom twists the knife, revealing that not only has she been lied to, but rather than a champion of order plucked by Sigmar for his wars, Neve is actually responsible for the death of a dozen heroes not important enough to be saved. Sigmar lied to her, failed to protect his own people, and even chose a champion of chaos over his own subjects. Neve rebuffs this offer, viewing losing half her soul and her memory as a price she is willing to pay for redemption. She also has faith in her future self that when she dies again and is presented with the same memories and the same choice, she will choose to fight for order again and again. The Phantom playfully agrees that they've done this before. The reason I love this episode is because of what it teases out about right and wrong. If you have to make a choice between sacrificing your own soul and memory to do the right thing instead of offered power and self-actualization but towards a nefarious end, what do you choose? It's also interesting to see Neve have faith in her own redemption that she will make the same choice again and again. It's also haunting because what will happen if a Stormcast as powerful as Neve becomes a champion of chaos filled with the secrets of the Stormcast able to use their many battles on behalf of the forces of order against them? This goes all the way back to episode 2 about Sigmar's Great Gambit, where he bet great and terrible things on the shoulders of Neve Black Talent, which brings us to the end for now. Games Workshop has politely and forcefully requested that we do not use the entirety of episodes in our reviews and breakdowns. I view it as my job to cut out a healthy chunk of the content, so you have an incentive to go check out the original. But to leave enough in there with the meat and bones of the episode, particularly the grizzly and satisfying violence, while filling in the gaps with informative and compelling lore. I genuinely do love creating this content, and it forces me to expand my knowledge of the universe and not just rely on my passion. So if you like my breakdowns, like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell so you can see wherever new content drops. Comment down below and feel free to fight out in the comment section over lore and narrative interpretations. If you can't think of anything to say, then type out comment for the comment gods. I'll salute you in real life with an Aquila, but I will reply with an 07 in the comment section saluting you for your service. Become a YouTube or Patreon member to help support the channel or check out our sponsors. I appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next one. Until the end. Special thanks to The Talented X, Trippy Liquids, Aircraft Sparky, Dylan Verdea, Stephanie Luminous, Tam, Ken, Sport Brand, Andrew Coey, Flippant Hubris, Trusty, Hippopotate, Happy Rogue, Christian Stafford, Michael Cranston, Sky Anon, Enclave Operator, It's Harold, Jaeger Bradley, Sir Pubert, Eagle Watch 123, 
Bizzard, Flaccid Phoenix, TSG Comics, Fezzles, Diogenes, Crabs Go Pitch, Taze Grove, Astronaut Farmer, The Real Birdman, Soren Axelson, The One Above All, Bud123, Fondue, Deus Halcyon, Vox, Drazar, Lucifer the Doberman, Female Escort IRL, Tango Hotel, Mitchell Johnson, Sir Liamson, John, Poofy, Leo Whitmer, Froggy Style, Adrian, Azriel, Cole G, Grassroots Hegemon, Christian Valeris, Name, Sir Fortesque, M. Penner, Weekend Jail, Exart Logan, and Jamaloo.